So uh, my name is Ryan Kimura. I'm uh, the marketing and web developer for a company called LineStar Utility Supply, which is a power line maintenance equipment tool distributor, so a middleman basically. Uh, they've got locations in four provinces across Canada, and I basically built out their website, which was kind of like abandoned by another design team. Uh, I also do their social media content, uh, like email marketing campaigns and graphic design for them. Um, I'm honored to be speaking here alongside such great industry leaders and people who definitely have something to teach. Uh, I don't know if I've got a whole bunch to teach you guys, but hopefully you'll be entertained while we get through this together. Um, big thanks to the sponsors who can make this happen. Uh, this is actually my first time to a WordCamp or any, any industry-related event. I've been meaning to, to come out and do the networking thing, and this is the only way that I could not back out of it, is I had to show up and do this talk, so I'm glad to be here and see what a good community everything is. Uh, you might be asking yourselves, why is this young guy standing on stage telling me about WordPress? I'm not sure. <laughs> but hopefully you can get something out of it. We can, uh, we can do it, and here I am, so we're making it happen. Uh, is there any students in the audience? No, well, hopefully it's entertaining because you guys aren't gonna learn a whole bunch. Um, <laughs> I also wanna say that this talk is as much about my successes as it is my shortcomings. Um, I'm no, by no means a glowing example of industry best practices, uh, and I think there's lots of that out there. You know, as long as you learn from your mistakes, own up to them, and grow, never be afraid to make mistakes. Everything is a learning process. Okay, so I'll start off with a brief history. <laughs> I'm parched. So I, uh, I grew up in Red Deer, Alberta, which is about 14 hours away. Uh, small little town, not a bunch of web work there. Uh, much like a lot of people fresh out of high school, not knowing what they wanted to do, I went straight into college. So I went into the local community college, into open studies, you know, did the poly science thing, some, the general Bachelor of Arts, don't know, what am I doing, I don't know. Uh, and after a year of that, I kind of figured I'd try fine arts because what a better way to spend your money, taking drawing classes. So I uh, went into the fine arts program, and this was actually a really integral part of me moving into WordPress because I found out how much I like creative aspects and the, the design features, and I, they never really teach you growing up that that is a viable career option. So kind of moving into a creative field, I found that, oh yeah, this is something I want to do. I'm, I want to try and make this more of a job. Um, a lot of classes there I liked, uh, like painting, sculpting and stuff. Uh, I was, I am not a good artist though, so uh, I didn't go to a lot of drawing classes. Uh, I actually foregoed my drawing classes to go to painting classes to finish some project for the end of the year. So it was, it's a moral gray area whether I was being responsible with my time or not. Uh, I made this big painting of Kim Jong-un for my final project and then I got kicked out of the program because I didn't go to enough drawing classes. So frantically after that, I was uh, applying all over Canada, you know, everything that looked interesting. Uh, I found a program at BCIT called Digital Design Development in the School of Business. And I was thinking that's probably graphic design stuff. They accept, accepted me and I was like, I'm going to BC. I'm not even, I don't care what the program is. Uh, so I went into it and it turns out it was 80% coding classes and some very hard coding classes that I wasn't prepared for. Uh, I, had never, I wouldn't have considered a computer coding anything because I'm not a science guy, but uh, once I was there, I was like, got to do this, got to make it through. So uh, I did. I found, I found that I actually really enjoy coding. I enjoy working on websites and stuff. So it's all part of the learning process. And then after that, I landed the job at LineStar miraculously. Uh, thank God for that. So what do I do at LineStar? Um, when I walked into the, web, the, the job, there was a website kind of partially made, not very well. Uh, it had 
like three or 400 pages on it, and I didn't want to create it. The theme was kind of broken. The site broke if I tried to change the theme, so obviously it was like some bad custom theme. Uh, and I was like, I don't want to remake a couple hundred pages. I'm just going to use CSS and JavaScript and style the site as best I can. Uh, so I kind of brought it up to date. I've got, I made it out there's about 3,000 pages now. So it's a bulky, bulky site, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for s signing up. <laughs> um, I also do random marketing stuff. Uh, I've designed some t-shirts for them. I do all their SEO analytics stuff. Made lots and lots and lots of promo material for different provinces requesting stuff. Um, I started up and am running their social media channels, which is primarily Instagram because of the Facebook business, whatever thing that happened January and Facebook business pages reach is like not good anymore. But so I'm finding like Instagram by itself, reposting stuff to Twitter and Facebook is, is all, all I've got time for right now because I'm spread pretty thin. So do that stuff. And then for the past couple months, I've been building them a tool catalog from scratch. So that's been a long, tedious process. I'm on page 400 right now, probably out of 500. So every day, entering part numbers, looking at tool measurements. Um, so yeah, mistakes and victories. Let's keep this as we move forward and see what I've done. It's my first job. I definitely have made some mistakes. There's definitely some areas that I could have improved on. But as long as you own up to your mistakes and you are like, yep, this is a, something I gotta fix, get it done. You know, mistakes don't have to be problematic for you. You can, you can get through it without freaking everybody out that you don't know what you're doing. Um, and with that, it is time for scenarios don't play out in the real world like they do in the classroom. I found out pretty quickly that uh, things on paper were not quite in practice. Uh, I took a four month class for how to format business emails properly. And that has never come up. Get <laughs> I get lots of one word, one sentence stuff. Most people misspell things. Uh, we work with about 50 to 80 suppliers and no one's doing the business email stuff, which is a shame because I, I love being, you know, proper way of speaking, which is failing me now, but <laughs> um, we've had a Mac commands course or terminal or whatever that is. That was gone the day after the class. Nobody used it again. Never came up in the program. Didn't come up in my work. Same with MAMP. I'm sure it's great. And, you know, for the people that know how to do that, that's, I'm very envious of you. But I got into a WordPress job, kind of moved away from that. So uh, skills kind of fade if you don't use them, and that's OK. Um, my program was a lot of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, eventually some PHP and MAMP, uh, a sprinkling of random courses that you wouldn't think you'd need in a coding program, like accounting, law, um, video editing, some, some weird stuff, but enjoyed it all, and then eventually had one class for WordCamp, or WordPress. And I, uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like WordPress at all. I, I was like, this is very restricting. Why, wouldn't, why would I do this when I can just code my own website? And I was an idiot, obviously, because ease of use is what makes WordPress so great. Like, everything's already built. If I tried to make a website that could do credit card, I'd be going to jail. You know, I can't do that. And, you know, thank God there's people that can. Same with plugins, same with uh, responsiveness. Like, I hate media queries. I'm not, I'm not good with that stuff. Everything's always breaking. So I leave it to the professionals. WordPress is a lot more based on, like, I think front end. I'm not a back end guy. So I like the, the styling, the CSS stuff. Um. Uh, I love plugins. Anybody who develops plugins or can do that backend stuff, got a lot of love for you because I rely on you a lot. Uh, that's also been my downfall, though, because I uh, was told in school, try not to run more than six to seven plugins on your site. Right now, I'm running 21, which I was talking to someone yesterday who said they were running a site with 40 plugins, so now I don't feel quite so bad, but there's definitely 
being increased functionality requests and just stuff that's easier to, to do with plugins. Uh, one of them was, oh, one of them, all of them. I'm going to quickly run through all 21 plugins. Half an hour is a big time to fill for me. Uh, so adding categories to pages, just so I can, there's pages with like 60, 60 items on it. This just is filtering. Uh, Breadcom nav is great for that top level, showing you what subcategories you're in. Google Analytics, because it's always nice to have another analytics page. Um, heat map uh, is great for seeing what's doing well on the front page. We have like featured products and stuff. Uh, iTheme security was already installed when I walked into the job, and I thought I should not deactivate something with the word security in it, <laughs> so I left that be. Uh, MailChimp, because that's how we do our uh, email marketing. We, I've, since I built the website, we have like 1,400 people on our emailing list. Uh, Metaslider, I've got thousands of Metasliders. It's just good, easy to use. Mobile menu for the mobile menu. Uh, Ninja forms for our contact forms. I know there's a million forms plugins out there. I might not be using the best one, but it's the one I'm using right now. Uh, P3, which is a plugin performance profiler, which is really good, especially for if you're running as many plugins as I am on a site. It'll tell you which ones are giving you problems or taking a long time. Uh, really simple SSL also was pre-installed. I just don't think it's a good idea to deactivate it. Even, it probably won't do anything, but it says SSL is enabled on your site. So I'm like, perfect. I'm just going to leave that be. Uh, regenerate thumbnails. If I need to resize everything in a batch, that's really good for that. Roan core, pre-installed, probably not a good idea to take stuff out until you know what it does. Uh, Search and Filter Pro it works hand in hand with the uh, categories, pages, and custom taxonomy. Short codes ultimate, everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> Running through this with my roommates, and they're like, go into depth more on short codes ultimate. I'm like, people don't want to hear that. <laughs> uh, simple custom JavaScript, I use just for like basic like image zoom on hover. Uh, Smush is really, 26 megabytes doesn't seem like a lot, but I know that there's a good site speed optimization from that. Uh, originally, my site was loading in like 14 seconds, and now it's at like one or two, so over a lot of optimization. Uh, responsive tabs for exactly what you'd think it does. Almost there. WordPress Rocket is also really good for optimization, has a lot of, a lot of options in it, so if you're looking for speeding up your site, WordPress Rocket's pretty good. Uh, Uber Menu 3, just if you've got really, really big menus, like I've got really, really large menus, uh, and it gives you lots of customization for that. Yoast, of course, is the go-to SEO plugin. Uh, plugin conflicts, yes, I have them. There's a lot of plugins on my site, so I, lots of the time, you update something, it's broken, like, what are you gonna do? manage it, put a band-aid on it. Like, I know a lot of sites that are duct taped together, and mine is no exception. <laughs> um, why is there a 404 page when I'm trying to access WordPress admin? I don't know, but I go in FTP, disable my plugins, log in, it's good. You know, it takes me five seconds. I'm not gonna take two days and go through all my plugins and try and debug that. Uh, but I have had to debug Slider, because two days ago, all my options disappeared with a plugin update. Like, I'm finally having to learn uh, WordPress debug, debug tool. Uh, the very first day on the job, my Chrome crashed while I was updating the WordPress core and the whole site, I lost it. I was, I was sweating, I was like, great, I'm gonna get fired on the first day, but figured it out, got back to it. Um, so you might be thinking, yeah, <laughs> learning opportunities. These are all learning opportunities, and I don't think you should shy away from if things are breaking, don't get stressed out if there's plugin conflicts or theme conflicts, like that's a part of increasing your skill set. And don't be afraid to go in there and, and tinker around and, and break stuff, make backups so you can go back to it. You know, don't be so afraid to mess stuff up. That's that's a big thing that held me back when I first started. I was like, I don't want to break anything, so I didn't want to delve into it too much, but with all the plugins, I eventually did break a lot of stuff and had to figure my way out of it. Um, going through those experiences does make you more confident in your abilities, so definitely don't, don't be afraid to shy away. Uh, another thing I love too much is CSS. I was like, great, I can style this whole site with CSS. 
Now I've got 3,800 lines of CSS, and I can't, I can't style it anymore. Everything breaks. So I'm locked myself into a corner there. Don't do that. Find a theme that works for you. Uh, just because you can style a whole site with CSS and force stuff into place doesn't mean you should. It's going to give you a lot of problems. Uh, but I, again, I walked into the site that had a couple hundred pages. I, going back, I should have made a new site, but here we are. Uh, errors. There are some errors on my site, and if you go on the site ever, you will find them, I'm sure. Uh, why is that out of alignment? I don't know. I've tried, I've tried to get it back. <laughs> that alignment issues there, alignment issues on Internet Explorer. I hate Internet Explorer. Everybody does. Try and explain to people, they're like, don't use Chrome, and they're like, why? Uh, nonetheless, got the site going. I increased the, the users in the beginning were like, I think a few hundred, now we've got 5,000 monthly, 31,000 page views. Uh, things I didn't learn in school, continuing along errors. It's planning ahead, you know? You always think planning ahead, yeah, I'll do a wireframe, I'll uh, do some sketch-ups and mock-ups. Planning ahead is a lot bigger than that, as I learned, uh, just how you're organizing content. Uh, I started off with my, my type, doing parent subcategories, and then within there, that was a mistake, because it would take me so long to scroll through, and I should have just done everything alphabetical. So that's not, I don't know how to transfer that to you guys, but take the time to think, is this going to work? Does this scale? Uh, didn't save any of my PSDs when I first started making brochures, because I was stingy on space on my laptop. And I finally got an a external hard drive. A Google Drive only gives you like 15 gigabytes with a free account, but OneDrive gives you a terabyte. So that's a good thing to know. Um, I am getting it now. I had the foresight to do paragraph styles and, and that stuff for the catalog, which would have been months more of work if I ever needed to change. So just try and, try and hone in on that. And remember that mistakes are OK. If you're not making mistakes, you're stagnant and your skills are going to deplete. So don't be afraid to push it. Um, these are, you might be thinking, these are rookie mistakes. And you're right, they are rookie mistakes. I'm a rookie, you know? It's okay to make mistakes. I'm, that's the theme, if you're not getting it. Don't be afraid, don't feel bad if you make mistakes. Um, I, I read somewhere that even Times Magazine still has grammatical errors. There's versions of the Bible that have spelling mistakes, like mistakes just happen. If you're working for someone and you make mistakes, it's hard to, and it's awkward to be like, hey, I messed up, but if you, if you have clear communication and you're like, this is what went wrong, this is what I've put in place to prevent it, it's not going to happen again, you should be okay. Like, all, clear communication is, is the number one thing you can do. Own up to your mistakes and then fix them. And remember, an apology without a plan for prevention is a prescription for repetition. Yeah, how's that for a quote? You may be asking, why hire and keep me? <laughs> Doesn't sound like I'm doing so good. Uh, besides my skill set, which growing, coming out of school, they kind of understood that, and my killer good looks, I have personality. <laughs> yeah, so I think personality, if not outweighing a skill set, can definitely contend with it. If there's tons of people that can do the job, they're gonna, your people want to work with people they enjoy working with. Um, it also cultivates a work family. If you get involved with the people you work with lives, you're going to want to go to work more because you're getting along with people. It's not just a job. It's a, it's a place to go and enjoy your time that you spend so much time at work. Uh, the catalog that I'm working on is very boring, and I hate it. But I enjoy my job, I enjoy going to work, I enjoy the people I work with. So that's, if you want to make your job work, the best thing you can do is get in there with the people you're working with and try and, try and form those bonds. Uh, my boss and the owners of the company give me a very nurturing environment where they let me try out different stuff. I run, like, approach them about running contests and they've been cool with that. As far as content goes, they're always very open to whatever. Um, Improve yourself from the inside out. This is about more about how getting along with employees not only sometimes outweighs your skill set, 
but it can improve your skill set because you're getting along, people like you, you make a mistake, it's okay, Ryan's an okay guy, we'll give him another chance. <laughs> then you're like, great, I'm happy to come to work, I'm happy to put in the effort, I want to be here, I want to work hard, and if you enjoy your job, you're more likely to push yourself and, and work on your, on your skill sets. Uh, if you're happy at work, you're going to try harder. No one wants to work hard in an unsupportive environment. So if you have employees, this might, there, here's my one bit of advice for business owners, like I, like I can do that. Uh, give people a nurturing environment and let people grow and let people make mistakes, because that's going to make them learn more and be a stronger employee. Uh, speaking of skill sets, use it or lose it. The art of maintaining your skill set. How is that for a smooth transition? Uh, this, this is especially true in tech skills. Um, I was really glad to be done with MAMP and PHP project management, those classes. And as soon as I was done them, they faded from my mind very fast. Uh, it's okay to lose skills that you're not using anymore. I was never going to be an accountant or I'd be going to jail for tax fraud, so I let that information go away from my mind. But uh, if you are interested in stuff, you should try and, and keep it up at home, which is hard, especially if you work on the computer all day, you don't want to go home, work on the computer all night. It's hard to maintain those skills, but find the time for it. Uh, I wish I had kept up on Illustrator After Effects more because I'm using that in my personal life. I learned it in school, and then I lost it, and I'm learning it again, so find the time for it. Uh, real quick, um, things that I've done outside of school that I'm just that aren't great, but it, you know, you got to find your passion somehow. Uh, just like little HTML gimmicks, got one here. This is just a little visual sequencer bank, and it's got like different visuals, and you can layer them. It's for like music stuff. Uh, I had just to get to try out e-commerce and setting up business numbers and stuff. I made a little store to sell online magnets. And that was a dream that died as well. <laughs> you know, it's OK. It's OK. As long as you're doing stuff constantly, people say it's, it's bad to keep starting new projects and not finish anything. But that's better than starting a project and not finishing it and never, never starting a project again. So you know, start something. It's OK if you don't finish it. Start doing new stuff. Push your skill sets. If there's stuff you want to learn, watch a YouTube video. Um, yeah, that was a making store. Do some video editing, but I don't have an example of it. Uh, fake it till you make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what am I doing right now? I'm faking it, but you're all captivated. <laughs> God. Uh, no one in tech knows everything. I've met lots of people in tech that don't know anything. You know, lots of, lots of people, it's okay to Google it. Google it. Everybody has Google. <laughs> Chances are the problem you're having, someone's had it before. The solution's already out there. Don't be, don't be afraid to, to just cop out and Google it. I don't have the room in my head for every DOM declara declaration, setting up animation stuff. It's like, it's very easy to Google. If people beat themselves up and they're like, I want to learn that for myself. And you can, but if you're on a time-based, oh, I got to fix this bug, like really utilize Google. Uh, plugins are great. Use them. Probably don't have to go too much into that, but I really love plugins, so don't be afraid to overload your site with plugins. Uh, yeah. Uh, when people don't understand, uh, if you're working for an agency or something with a lot of client turnover, obviously you're working with people who understand what you're doing. But there's a lot of web jobs out there that are just, you're the web guy at some company. People don't, under, don't understand what you're doing at your job. People come by me and my desk while I'm debugging something. They're saying, hey, weren't you on that page 20 minutes ago? Doesn't look good. I'm working hard, but they, you know, you got to. Fake it till you make it. So good examples to make it look like you're working and people will stop bugging you. Bring up any uh, Stack Overflow page. That's very complicated looking. No one's going to talk to you. <laughs> any analytics page. Whoa, yeah, don't talk to me. I'm working. <laughs> you, you know, there's lots of stuff. If people aren't appreciating the work that you're doing, there's no harm in making them think you're working as hard as you are. So you know, maybe not the best advice, but roll with it. Uh, in conclusion, never mind. Unless people work in code, they probably don't understand. So 
can try and educate people. It's, it's hard when people are like, well, why can't you do this? And you have to explain the technical aspects of it. Just always try and be the most communicative you can. Um, when I first started out, I was sweating a lot. I was like, man, I crossed this site on the first day. I don't know what I'm doing. Had to like migrate hosts. Had never done that before. Chances are, if you're advancing in your career and your skill set, you're going to always come up on stuff you've never done before or is new to you. And it's OK. Just smile and pretend you know what you're doing. Keep your cool, and people will. Usually, people are happy. You can make a web page appear at all. So don't sell yourself too short. Um, if you feel like you're a sham in any job, be confident. Don't let people know that you think you're a sham. So uh, everyone's also always learning. You know, you're not the only one that's struggling. That learning is forever. You know, people who are like, I'm done learning. I, I know all I need to know. Are, those skills are going to fade, and they're going to fall off the radar. So you got to upkeep your skill set. Uh, tech is meant to break. Plugin conflicts, plugins update. It's going to break. Don't plan, plan for it breaking. Don't plan for everything running smoothly. Uh, and keep open lines of communication at every stage. If there's problems, whether you're, they're your fault or not, make sure you are proactive in your communication and letting people know what's up. In conclusion, we're almost done, guys. Uh, think outside the box. You know, sometimes you have to go away from best practices to meet certain functionality requests. And sometimes you just figure out something that works for you. There's lots of different plugins that do the same stuff. Just find something that you're comfortable with. Don't be afraid to try some new stuff. Uh, plugins are great, so use them. Uh, mess up, own up. You know, if you do mess up, talk about it, identify it. Be like, here's why I messed up. Here's what I'm doing so I won't mess up again. Uh, plan ahead, not just in design, but functionality. Plan ahead for if you're doing social media. Plan ahead for the holidays. Uh, personality is more than your skill set, so really push that. And use it or lose it. Skills disappear if you don't do them. And then I was hoping for a better picture, but came, came up fast. <laughs> Thank you. If you have any questions. I don't know how I did on time. A little fast. I was, I was 20 minutes over last night, so better to be short than over. Is there, is there any questions? Probably not. Oh. It's more of a comment. Okay. I, yeah, I was expecting a lot of comments. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and that's definitely what, what something I've had to try and push myself more lately is doing that stuff outside of my job. I'm spread pretty thin at work, and I I don't have the time to do it at work to gain those those skills. But I'm definitely trying to push myself to uh, go home and plunk back down on the computer. By the time I had realized I should have redone the website, I was probably like 1,000 or 1,500 pages in. And I talked to them about it at the beginning as well a little bit. I was like, hey, might be a good idea to redo it completely. And time was of the essence. So churned it out as much as, as fast as I could. And then kind of time moved on, updated, fixed bugs. I think down the road, there's probably there's talk of like, doing a better site from the ground up. Uh, but yeah, just, just time, time restraints.
on my live site. If it's, if it's something, no, I know, I know. If it's something that I think will break it, I do it late at night, but uh, no, no, no. I should be doing staging, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll probably, I should probably do that. <laughs> uh, you say that you group traffic on your website quite a substantial amount, and you submit a lot of experiments. What do you think is the main contributor to that? Mm. I think just because their site before was so awful and hard to use, <laughs> it's just been easier for people to use it. I also market it quite a bit, like pretty active on, on our social media and yeah, just doing, doing contests and stuff kind of gets the word out there. So, just, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. On, on that note, I'm off. Okay, thank you everyone. <laughs>